All right, then there's the issue of Ted Cruz, who uh, right now has the only other mathematical chance to close the deal and get the delegates necessary to be the Republican nominee. Now, he has a much tougher road, though. Of course, he would have to get better than 80% of the remaining delegates versus about 53% for Donald Trump. So he has a tough road there. Uh, but already he's facing resistance, not from potential voters, but from his own party. Establishment figures who say that, uh, well, just because we're looking at you doesn't mean we flip over you. We just like you a little bit more than the other guy, which is a little weird because they're also demanding that he make nice and all but apologize for prior offenses. I don't know how that's going to go down, but I'll ask Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick on that. He's a big cruise backer. Governor, um, now all yes. this is with Hi, a Neil. whisper, a nod, and a wink, but how do you think Ted Cruz will respond to that, that type of an offer, more like an ultimatum? Well, let me tell you how I respond, uh, Neil. Uh, today I'll be putting out a press release, and I'll be a delegate. Many of the guests on your show are not delegates, uh, but I will be a delegate at large at the convention. And I'm going to draw a line in the sand, Neil. If, if the party operatives uh, ignore the will of the people, there will be a huge fight, and I'll be leading it along with a lot of other Texans and other crew supporters on the floor. The will of the people must be heard. Look, there are only two candidates that you said that have a shot at 1237 before the convention and then two legitimate candidates at the convention. And I will do all I can to fight for Ted Cruz to get those 1237. As far as this apology, Neil, it's insulting. All Ted Cruz has done since he was elected senator in Texas has represented the voice of the people and kept his word. He's represented the voice of the people across this country and done very well. Many of their states have been very close, as you know, in all the, in all the different uh, vote counts. Uh, if, if the party operatives, Neil, try to parachute anyone in at the convention to be the choice of the delegates, if we have a contested convention, uh, I believe there will be a massive uh, turning of their back on the party by Cruz and Trump supporters. All right, well, Governor, it must let me be ask one you, of those uh, two candidates. All right, well, let me ask you this. Because yeah. it's happened before, where the leading candidates somehow couldn't cobble together the delegates necessary, yes. and they went to multiple ballots. So let's say after the first ballot, Donald Trump yes. comes up just shy of the 1237. Uh, your candidate comes up shy of that 1237. They go to a second ballot. They still can't yes. get either your guy or Donald Trump to that magic number. You know how this goes. The, 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 that's when all of a sudden people talk to you. Neither of these guys can do it. And, and, right. and, and it goes like that. Uh, but, but what would you do? But here's, what would you say? Yeah, but here's the deal, Neil. On the second ballot, maybe it's the third ballot, Ted Cruz, I believe, will be the nominee selected. Look, there are going to be the two vote, leading vote getters going into the convention if neither has 1237. And by the way, for Ted to get the requisite delegates, he only needs about 55% of the vote. And you know, in South Carolina, when I was on no, with you, it seems like no, a long time ago. He needs about 83% of the remaining delegates out there. No, 83% of the delegates, Neil, but only about 55% of the vote. Remember, the vote does not correlate vote to delegate. I understand In other words, you that. want a certain percentage but of the vote. Let's just stick delegate to delegate yes. right now at this point. So let's, and, let's well, say delegate. No, no, I just want to be clear. No, yeah. no, please, please, just yeah. indulge me on this. You, you're okay. saying that eventually someone, and you think one of these two guys, will come right. up with the 1237. Now, history yes. suggests, as you know, Governor, that their appeal wears thin, each of them, as time goes on in multiple ballots, because their delegates are not bound to them after, let's say, a first uh, ballot, maybe after a second ballot. Different rules for different states, I grant you. And then it's anyone's bet, right? Well, Neil, you make a great point, but here, here's what the party should be doing. They should be coalescing around Ted Cruz. This idea of the power brokers in Washington deciding who the nominee is, the power brokers are the people. And our party well, will disintegrate, Neil. how about they not coalesce Neil. around anyone? They just be unbiased and just not see how it sorts out. If, if your guy gets a 1237, he's got it. Donald right. Trump gets a 1237, he's got it. Exactly. But there should not be this effort. It needs to stop now, Neil, of trying to circumvent the will of the people because the will of the people, if you leave it to the people, the delegates on the convention floor, they will pick one of the two. I believe they'll pick Ted Cruz, and that's who I'm fighting for. The delegates going to the convention, Neil, are not interested in Paul Do Ryan or Mitt Romney or anyone else. Do you think are looking else? for the, uh, maybe yeah. something out of the blue, that maybe uh, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz uh, join forces? Or, or... Well, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio joint forces. Uh, you've heard all of this talk. What, what is the sure. likelihood of, the, of, of a deal like that before we get to the convention? 
Well, I, I don't know the likelihood of a deal, but your scenario, Neil, fits to what I'm saying. In other words, one of those two has to be at the top of the ticket, I, and I'm fighting for Ted Cruz to be at the top of the ticket. All we hear from the, from the party elite is that they don't want Donald Trump. Well, there's only other one person to rally around. There's only one person who's been running uh, state, you know, nationally, and that's Ted Cruz. There's only one other person well, who has gone racked up before. victories in states. The party's gone outside before. Pardon? The guy wasn't running. The Garfield got in there. He just showed up. Like, oh, well, I guess I'm yeah. going to be the nominee. Yeah, well, you, well, you know, that you're, you're correct, Neil, but that was then. This is now. I this understand. is 2016. We've never seen such an outpouring of, of interest and support, whether they're viewers watching the debates or turning out at the polls. The people, if they are turned it sounds back like now, someone's going to be royally ticked off here. So yeah, the, no, I don't if, see if Kumbaya any, if going it's anyone else. It. If it's anyone else other than Ted Cruz or Donald Trump, and I prefer Ted, and I'll fight right, for Ted, right. but if it's anyone else other than them, yes, it's going to be more than ticked off. I think you'll be seeing the end of the party. And as lieutenant governor of the state of Texas and a delegate at the convention, I, I'm asking all of the elected officials, all in Congress, all, right. all in Senate, to stop the talk of, a, of another person. Gotcha. It's Ted or all it's right. Donald, period. Governor, thank you very, very much for taking the time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Neil. Always a pleasure.